So I actually want to touch on something both of you all said, where, because I kind of run into this issue myself sometimes, right? I walk into these rooms, I'm, I'm in tech. Mm-hmm. Everybody in Google is some of the smartest people in the world, yeah. very wealthy individuals. And in the, in the rooms that I play in, right, I, I lean very heavily on my personality. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my superpower, right? Yeah. But, Jeff, you said, like, having that confidence when you walk in a room to know that you belong. How do you establish that confidence, mm-hmm. especially when you are in these rooms where imposter syndrome is very, very, uh, very relevant, very yeah. evident. What you drink, yeah. Sapphire Bombay, only what you think, yeah. Looks like we'll be tied up for some weeks, yeah. Lockdown can't see no end. Top down, but we rollin', we all in. What you drink, yeah. Sapphire Bombay, only what you think, yeah. Looks like we'll be tied up for some weeks, yeah. Lockdown can't see no end. Earlier, you said you were from where? Where are you from? Chicago, man. And you said Greatest you city in the world. You, you said you are. Greatest city in the world, baby. Like, what did you say? You said you got to Mizzou and you are a true kid from the Chicago South side. South side, right? South side. Perspective. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, I might have looked at that as a deficit, right? That I'm from the hood. I didn't have a lot of money. My parents were, didn't go to college. I was the first in my family to go to school. All of these things that I saw as deficits, I changed my perspective to understand that they're actually values that they bring a unique perspective into any room that I'm in because the rooms you're in in Google, they don't know many people like you, Khalil. No, they like, do not. You might be the only one. Yeah. Barbara and, and John do not know. You, yeah. <laughs> not only are you at that's Google that's that's and you're working and you're very smart, right? Mm-hmm. Let's start there, but you're cool too. Mm-hmm. And so like the value you bring to the room of giving Google a perspective in Chicago <laughs> to understand people from Chicago of the people that they're trying to market to and serve, mm-hmm. That's a lot of weight. It's more weight than a homogenized, single soul perspective that most of the other people who might have went to the Ivies in the room have. Mm-hmm. And so when you start to see your unique identity, your soup, that's your superpower. Like those are your superpowers. Coming from the South Side of Chicago means a few things. A, we, were, we are resilient. We're crafty and strong. We probably know how to talk a good game. And if given the opportunity to succeed, we're gonna outgrind, outwork anybody. One of the things I used to play ball, right? When we played basketball, we would go to other parts of the country and hoop. And they'd be like, we know Chicago hoopers because they don't stop. They're relentless. And a lot of times we carry that weight, like the city of big shoulders thing. It's a real thing when we move around the world. It's what makes us unique. Sometimes here it, it, it hinders us. Right, because we try to do it all on our own. Yeah. But I, I think when you recognize through that lens of perspective that those are the things that make you very special, you change your approach. You're confident now, like, well, you know, Google X Y Z. I know that, like, when we were doing this on the South Side, we were doing this in this community. This is what made move the needle. It also makes us understand efficiency a lot more, right? When you grow up, poverty is a superpower, man. Cause you know how to do more with like, we the willing, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we are capable of doing anything with next to nothing because we learn how to do that very early on. Mm-hmm. And so when I was your age, even younger and, and even older, I would walk in the rooms and I didn't see that as a lens of an advantage. Now, man, that's my strategic advantage. I have no problem talking about my past and background because people are absolutely amazed that you make it from Auburn Gresham to CEO. Auburn Gresham to artists with paintings in nine countries? Talk on it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Look, how, talk on it. how does that work? Mm-hmm. How does that happen? And I'm happy to tell them. And, I'm, and I'm, then I say, hey, it's not just me, though. Mm-hmm. I, got a, I got a gang of people behind me mm-hmm. who are better than I am. Mm-hmm. They just need the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm a firm believer, too, of right, being the dumbest in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. growth's uncomfortable, right? And so when we talk about growth we talk about that sort of mindset i'm glad you sort of touched on that but i mean i think just having a certain mindset that you can grow in any space yeah. mm-hmm. you know i want to touch on give you sort of a shout out like 
I really leaned on you from undergrad days on how you built relationships. Like I saw how Khalil latched onto you mm -hmm. and it was a very, very successful relationship, right? To be able to pull him in and for him to also have the confidence as a freshman mm -hmm. to sit here and say like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing it well and I want to learn from you. Mm -hmm. That mentality, mm -hmm. that sponge-like mentality, it takes a certain level of being humble too. Don't no matter me, because Khalil, I wouldn't use humble to describe, <laughs> describe Khalil as freshman, freshman year. Hey, y'all, freshman year. Freshman, freshman year, year, Khalil. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, fresh, yeah. look, man, I'm, I'm 18, you know, I'm feeling myself. I'm, the, right. I'm, I'm, I'm hot shit. I'm not mad about but it. But sometimes that's the energy. Swaggy K. That's the, Swaggy K. That's sometimes the energy you got to have to go through the world, because sometimes yeah. when when, uh, when the world tells you no a lot, I'm not mad, I'm not mad at people not being humble. It's like, you have to be respectful, though. Like, the thing exactly. is, like, don't... You don't have to try to truck. Well, we don't use that word. You don't have to. You don't have to overpower someone else in order to be able to, you know, shine. It's like I, I'm in a race only against myself to be better. The name of my biggest competition matches the name of my driver's license down to the letter. Like I am, I am, I am, I am who I am. It's a, Facts. it's a poem that I wrote. Uh, but, but, I must but, that has to be in a poem. Yeah. Oh, rewind, rewind, yeah, 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 rewind, 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 rewind. That's Brother Al Sharpton like right there. Bro. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm done for the day. Thank you for the podcast. Right. Uh, no, <laughs> my God. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, one of the pieces I wrote, one of the poems I wrote says, mm -hmm. I'm in a race only against myself to be better. The name of my greatest competition matches the name of my driver's license down to the letter and all of the other information on my ID. IDs for me, the only person worthy of being deemed my greatest competitor. And the thing is like, you talk like about- like, Bars. Yo, hold on a second, bro. bro. Like, like, you take this way, you take the headphone out, got Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, got, I gotta get it, cause y'all know how he ain't wanna say the word Trump. Oh, yeah, like, I mean, we ain't gonna say that word. We ain't gonna, we gonna bring that word. We gonna take that word in. Oh, hey, no, look, man, because it's, it's a good day. We not about to bring that negativity. <laughs> we ain't talking about Donald. We talking about spades. Yeah, Trump. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You gotta just, you gotta, you gotta, gotta jump over that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had to, I had to redirect, redirect, redirect. <laughs> man, that's crazy. But, though. but no, but but stuff like that is important. I mean, even when we're talking about that line, it's like I think dealing with imposter syndrome. Even mm -hmm. like I said earlier, like writing down all the reasons why you never be great. Burn it. Write down who you are. I think that if Right now, anybody listening to this podcast, what are the three greatest things about you? Like, say that to yourself right now. What are the three can greatest even, things can about you? Can you even name that? Be, can you be comfortable enough to like be respect, like introspective of yourself to say you know what are the, your three greatest strengths are? And it's important because if you can't, if you can't name it right now, listening to this podcast, you're going to default to that in a room of where you're trying to say who you are. Exactly. Because if you can't say right now, what are the three greatest things about you? And that's not even like a I'm being on myself type of situation. If you can't say that right now, when you're nervous, when that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs and you are like, I don't know what's going on, you may not think about those three things, but if you know those automatically, you can pull those out in the right time. And words like the poems that I write and things like that, it's for, or, or the names of the tide, like I said, this is the adventurer. It's like, in that time, I want people to feel like, I'm in this room feeling nervous. You maybe catch a glimpse of yourself. You see the tide, you're like, I'm the adventurer. I'm going yeah. to go to unmapped experiences with, with, op with an optimistic opportunity. Then, then you go for it. And I think that we just have to remember these key things about ourselves so we default to our greatness and we don't default to what makes us not valuable enough. Derek, you know, I'm big on tangible things, right? So like for those watching, uh, you can take the Gallup Strength Finder for free, right? It's Know Your Strengths. It's a book. It's not expensive. You go to that site, take the Strength Finder test. Yeah. You will, you will be surprised. I remember when I took that exam, um, I always thought that I was really good at relationship building with people because I know a lot of people and I think people, I get along with people well. Yeah. Like none of my five strengths were in the relationship quadrant. Surprise. And what it, what it made me realize is that the things that I was, that I was being strategic, a, future, a futuristic activator, woo, and ideator attracted people to me. But I actually needed a lot of help on the relationship management portion of it, right? So like, it even helps you see your gaps when you understand your strengths mm -hmm. so that you can surround your people who are great relationship folks. So when I was running my startup full time, I hired a project manager. She was wonderful with like all the nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, good morning. This is Bree. I'm re reaching out to see if we can get your content over instead of me, which would be like, yo, good morning. Or hey. Need the content today, period, right? Yeah. And what I was doing was eroding relationships in my approach. 
when I brought somebody on that could do that relationship management component, it made us look better as a team. Because I'm great at the strategy, ideation, right. activation, moving people to do something, using influence for that. But it took me understanding my strengths for that. And so you're right, you gotta do that. And so get, take the test. Mm -hmm. yeah. Understand where you are, pay the 19 to $29, Get the extended test. And Gallup, if you're watching this, by the way, <laughs> you can sponsor this podcast since I'm giving you all this free publicity. You hear? Bing you bong. Bong. Yeah. Right. Please. It's I got it's just a check to be good. But um, I, I mean, I know we're, we're about to start wrapping up here shortly. Uh, I know I had a couple more things that I think are really important for us to address. And I think one of those things is like, you know, just we've, we've talked about it, but let's be very forward with like, why are relationships important, right? I think we're sold the dream of Go home, you work hard at your nine to five, you do good work and you're all sent to the top, yeah. mm -hmm. right? But I'm the type of person that like, you know, if I can learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. and if you're willing to share those mistakes with me, why do I need to do the same thing? Why do I need to recreate a wheel that's already been created, mm -hmm. right? And so even learning that from lateral people, people who have done things and been in spaces that you haven't, but maybe they're younger. So there's like two parts of this, right? Like just the importance of relationships, but then also knowing where you are in 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 life, right? I think a lot of people are like, I can't help the next person because I'm not X, Y, or Z, yeah. right? I don't, I can't, you know, how am I gonna mentor someone else or I'm only 26. I mm. haven't done, I'm not a CEO. I'm not X, Y, or Z. So I haven't arrived yet. Right, I haven't arrived yet. A lot, mm. and, and that's always been like a thing, like I haven't arrived and to some, they never arrive, I guess, mm. right? So the importance of relationships and then when, when is the right time? right, of, of taking that next person and, and to lift as you climb. Yeah, I think, I'll go to the second question first. I feel like you can help out anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I've done with, you know, graduating from Mizzou, I created this, basically this group by Black Mizzou, which is a list of 100 plus black owned businesses from Mizzou alumni. And I'm doing some great work with University of Missouri about integrating them fully into it, where they're spending thousands of dollars on black owned uh, businesses, giving their products to incoming freshmen. We're having mentorship and leadership uh, programs. And one of the things that we're working on for the fall is a mentorship program where business owners on the list are going to mentor entrepreneurship minded students on campus. And so I reached out to the list of business owners on the list and said, hey, if you're interested in mentoring, let me let me know and I'll you know connect you to the next step. Mm -hmm. And this one person who is on the list that I admire, they wrote me back and said, I want to do this, but I don't think that I'm valuable enough. Wow. And and that just that just took me back because I'm like, I wanted you to Out of anybody, able, right? I wanted you to be able to say that, but the to think that you've accomplished the things that you've accomplished, and you still feel like, feel like you don't have anyone, to, anything to teach someone, which is a complete. You have to reframe that because even if a student doesn't have their paperwork together, you have your paperwork together as a business. That's right. That that's step. You can help that person do that, and that doesn't mean that you have to make them a million dollars in a day. That means you have to help them get where they're not. And so I think that we have to reframe what we think is helpful and, and, and is helping someone and not to extrapolate it to be the extreme where you can like send them a jet, but you can also help someone just get a better suit. You can help someone mm -hmm. sit down in a session and just say, what do you want to do? Help them figure it out to get to the next step to so maybe they can get the person that will send them the jet, you know, automatically. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like, know how you right. can help and that you can help and just do that to the, to the person. And for me, I, I think it's also about just addressing yourself in the time. One of, you talk about how, you know, it's not just about doing the hard work and someone will see you and they'll reward you for it. That like, that hit me like five o'clock last year, on, on like one year ago to this day. You know, it's like, I was from that time period where it's like you're just doing the hard work and then people will see you and, and that's what it that's what it is, but times change. And I think that not chaining yourself to the ideals that you think that you have and being able to pivot that. So I know for me at my job, it's like I never one thing I didn't want to have is like I'm an entrepreneur too and I'm doing all these things because I'm like, you're in corporate America, like you can't say anything about what you're doing. But that has opened up other opportunities by revealing that part of myself yeah. that has allowed growth in all areas. And I think that, you know, just Relationships are important because if you share more of yourself, people know you more, they can connect more dots for you and get you to where you're going quicker than hiding parts of yourself and taking longer to do it. Mm -hmm. Quick story, this man, Derek, I, got, I have to give another shout out to Derek. You talk about the small things, mm -hmm. 
This oh, man, Derek, literally sat with me my first two, three internships. We still have those resumes. Yeah. He built out my my entire first template. If my I couldn't build out my resume <laughs> myself. Derek literally, I literally attribute Derek sitting, he did resume workshops with me. He would literally call me on a Saturday and be like, hey, this is my PDF, this is what I use for my resume. Let's make your experiences fit this, this template. I, it's not an internship that I applied for that I never got. Speaks to it. I mean, because I, of that. I think that that speaks to what I was, I was gonna wow. share. You know, I heard President Obama say, uh, shout out to our forever president. Uh, president Obama say, if you take care of yourself and you take care of the people around you, the work always gets done. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks to the value and power of relationships. First, the relationship with yourself to practice good self-care, good health and mental awareness, to be self-aware. The value of the people around you, caring for others, not for what they can help you accomplish, but for what, you know, just genuine like interest and care. That's why I, I, I talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, I think sometimes it feels, it's funny because Yoshi would be like, I don't want to bother you and you're so humble, Yoshi. And I'm like, you are never a bother mm -hmm. to me. When I see your number in the phone, it makes me feel better. So you're not, a bo you're not bothering me no matter what you ask me. You're in my circle, my network, my family of people that I know that if I need to call on, I can call on for just about anything and you've got my back. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that that's reciprocated because I know that when we talk about the work, whatever the work thing is, whether it's a youth program, or I'm trying to build a new app, or I'm trying to launch a business, or I'm trying to get art in Mizzou's bookstore. I've got family, because we've taken care of, I've taken care of myself and the people, the work gets done. And so that's, I mean, that's just the power of what relationships can bring to your world. The second point of like, when you're ready, man, I used to think that too. And then a kid would walk up to me, literally like a, a, a young person. I remember the first formal mentor relationship I had, I was 28. And Thornwood High School asked me to do this program to mentor a kid. I started a company doing graphic design. The kid wanted to be a graphic designer. So he worked with me that summer. The kid went on to UIC, now is a grown man, working full time, has a job at Havas, like killing the, killing the game, right? But I didn't think I was like able, capable, ready to mentor him. And then when we got into the work and the questions he asked were like, yo, how do I do this? When can I do this? How can I? And I'm like, this is, this is actually, I do know how to do this. Mm -hmm. We often tell ourselves that we're not ready for something. Uh, to, and it's just the imposter syndrome showing up again when we absolutely are. Mm -hmm. But do you know how many kids on the south side of Chicago would love to know how you go work at a law firm, become a lawyer? At How old are you? Small, 26. At 26. Yeah. How many young kids right now on the block in Roseland, Inglewood, Auburn Gresham, like, how can I work at Google one That's day? That's right. That's right. How old are you? 26. Do you know all of the value you have to add for young people? All like right, like right now? Kids don't even understand, like I work with them. How do you go to college? Mm -hmm. Nobody in my family has ever filled out the FOSFA. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to write a personal statement. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to articulate the value that I bring because while I don't see it as a superpower, I work full time, I'm a 3.7 GPA student and I take care of my little brother and sister. Why is that special? That's just, that's just life. That's, and that's, that's every day. Absolutely special. Right. Mm -hmm. All the skills you have to be able to navigate and manage all of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a big proponent of encouraging folks to, to try, try, try to mentor. Get in a formal mentoring program so you can understand like how to do it, the value that you bring. And man, just, just watch the things take off. Like, I, 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 don't, I lost track. I think I had like 35 mentees, like formal mentees. And most of them now are grown men, like doing their thing, killing it, and they're mentoring. Because that's the idea, lift as you climb, right? Like lift as you climb and continue to pull people up. Yeah. And, and to know the relationship about what a mentor does and what a mentee does yeah. too, because you, back to that question earlier about when you're reaching out to someone, how do you get their, their attention? Nothing is better for me as a mentor than to sow into good ground and to see that what I've told people that they're actually coming, yeah. that they're actually doing. Yeah. It's, you know, like just said, like when you call Yoshi, it's like when you call, it's like because of the relationship, but also you're going to take it and apply it. Like yeah. the fact that we had a call about the podcast and we are sitting in the room <laughs> recording the podcast. Came like on. God, this, this is this this is important. Like it's important for the mentee to call. It's important for the mentor to answer. It's important for the mentor to give good advice. It's That's important right. for the mentee to take the advice to have the relationship that works together for us to move forward. And that makes it even better. Like when you call next time, it's like when you have an idea, we know you're gonna do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it could be, and, and that's gonna be like I am busy, but I know that you're going to do this because you are at least moving forward. Mm -hmm. Moving forward in style. 
Yeah. Move forward and stop. <laughs> hey, no, on, on that note, though, on that note, though, that's, uh, like, I really appreciate you all, um, you all coming on today. Yeah, for sure. Like, especially, like, wrapping up the season, I think you all actually hit some, some nails right on the head when it comes to, like, it's a real full circle moment for me, mm-hmm. especially, because I'm like... Eight years we kind of put into this, and now look at us now, and we're we're not done yet. Like we're not even we just now scratching the surface. So, like I said, uh, Yoshi and I we're forever grateful Absolutely. for you all definitely coming to our lives. And on that note, we're gonna do a, let's do a toast. We're gonna do a toast. We got we let's toast. We're gonna end of course with what we've been doing, and that's a toast to success. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to toast up uh, our good stuff. Our, Bottle of Bring in the bottles. Uh, but, but we're Bring in the just, bottles, Crunk. The, the bottles. Oh, fine, fine, high quality orange juice over here. By the way. So, yeah, I was, yeah, I have apple juice in my cup. You know. So, yeah, you know, we got a non drinking This is okay, you know. So honestly, you know, the I end of this segment is really just toasting, of course, to success, right? Mm-hmm. And really, what your definition of success is. And while he plays with this bottle a little bit, um, I think one thing I just wanted to hit on really quickly too is I found the importance of. Like when you talk about your vision, knowing that even sometimes your mentors, you got to be careful because some mentors can stifle that vision. Yeah. Because if you have the bigger vision because you were placed on their shoulders, that might be intimidating to them. Or that might, that might cause some sense of, well, I don't know if you can do that, right? Because maybe their own insecurities are projected onto you. Right. And another thing, you know, as far as just not wanting to be a bother, I know a lot of people feel that same way about me when hitting me up because they know I'm busy. Mm-hmm. But... That feeling of I don't want to bother you also comes from, you know, just the this just the sake of, you know, I know that the value I can bring, but also you realize that it's not personal. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of the times you want to connect with somebody, you send that perfect email, that perfect message, and they don't reply. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a confidence thing, but it's also just being humble enough to say, like, hey, I know what I bring. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, a matter of time and staying on that. Because I think that is the power of the mentee. Right, because you should be busier than I am. Mm-hmm. And so if we're reaching that point, I want to drive that relationship. So what I'm looking to get out of it is in my head. And I appreciate you doing that because for me now at this point, I told somebody, people don't really get it. I have to schedule everything. If it's not on the calendar, it's not it's real. It's not on the calendar, it's not real. <laughs> yeah. And and you guys do, I mean, all, of y- all three of y'all do a really nice job of like, I know we need Jeff. So we're gonna give them the information ahead of time and you get it, you put a calendar. You know, look, we know you look. Y'all, we're we started talking about this a month ago. Like, we need a date. Can, when can we get in to see it? Because then it lets me also prioritize the things that I need to do for you. And so that's my responsibility too, is like the mentor it oftentimes is to prioritize the things that I say I'm going to do and to show up to do that. And Yoshi, you said it, like, I think the vision thing, man, like the interesting thing is like I always talk about painting. You know, I say that like when I started painting, it's a lot different than tech. I would go talk to tech people, mentors in tech that I had. They would be like, I can't tell you how to do that because it's my secret sauce. And I'm like, well, no, it's just tell me how you built it. I, I, help me understand what I need to do to build it. I don't want to build what you're building, but if you can help me navigate, and they wouldn't. It. The thing about artists that are different, an artist will show me how they did the exact thing they did on the canvas. But what they recognize is that even though they show me the technique, my hand doesn't move like their hand moves, so I can't do exactly what they did. So I share all, you wanna learn how I did something? Come come, come learn. Cause you're gonna take that technique and make it all your own. This is why we have our own styles up here today, mm-hmm. right? So I share vision. Cause you can't take what I'm gonna do the way I'm gonna do it and right. do it. Cause your hand doesn't move like it does like mine's on the canvas. Right. Exactly. And that's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got your own style. Got your own yeah, style. Well, yeah, part of, part of me, I don't drink. Though I'm always raising the bar when I'm in them. So uh, I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this apple juice, but so for this, so I don't want you to. It's I, just I, I don't, I don't mean no no, disrespect. Look, okay. You don't even, you ain't gotta sip it. We just gonna clink, we gonna clink glasses real okay, bougie okay, like. Okay, you know? you know, I, I do it, do it for the you look. Get, you, I, look, you giving Jay Z. Do it for the look, yeah. Sorry. Do it for my. Sorry, man. not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo. So, uh, you want to do the toast? Yeah. Um. I. I honestly. I, let's 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 toast up. Um. This episode, this season has been. I honestly dedicate this year to to execution, to, to bringing, making dreams reality. Um, and then this episode, Lifting As You Climb, like the importance of mentorship, the importance that you all played in our lives. We definitely, like I'm, I'm always gonna sit here and be a proponent. If anybody asks about Jeff and Derek, I have never have a bad thing to say. Um, 
And you know, and my brother here as well, you know, for sticking this, you know, I pitched this vision to Yoshi and he was like, that's amazing. Let how can I help you make this a reality? So uh, I'm just you know, I'm grateful. Let's toast toast to brotherhood, toast to uh, making dreams reality, and you know more blessings in 2022. Yeah. For my yeah. last, for yeah. my yeah. last, yeah. Yeah. for my last, and for, we'll for be my, back for my last episode. This is for my last episode. episode. This is for for my last episode. episode. Right. Look, we coming back. We coming. Season two is definitely what happening. What you think? Yeah. Stop by Bombay. Only what you think? Yeah. Looks like we'll be tied up for sweet.